GK, <coughs> good morning. Um, so, uh, uh, in the Dharma, uh, supposed to be, I should talk this one, this subject last week, but uh, because last week is a, I need to talk a little bit about the Nagarjuna's life story, so it taking too much time. So I left for this week. And uh, after this week, uh, I'm not going to uh, repeat this one continually because it's, it's taking time. So uh, please remember. And uh, in the generally, uh, you can call the Hinayana motivation or, uh, or general Buddhist motivation. As it's called the renunciation, uh, which is a we generate in our mind when we took refuge to the three jewels of Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. Uh, that is the uh, fundamental motivation of the renunciation of Buddhism. Uh, so that reason, Lord Chidisong said, distinguishing the Buddhism and non-Buddhism is a, uh, a refuge. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, uh, when come this refuge, uh, everyone, every tradition has some degree of refuge, you know, uh, some degree of, uh, uh, they have some kind of a Buddha, they have some kind of Dharma, they have some kind of Sangha community. But uh, uh, in the Buddhism, one is a different, is a one will take refuge in the three jewels. Is the involve of a renunciation. With all the renunciation, we are not taking completely refuge. Um, other tradition may, may not necessarily need that, that renunciation. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, also, uh, when we take refuge to the Buddha, uh, we are not uh, asking to Buddha to support us or we're not asking Buddha to always look after us. Actually, we really much admire about Buddha's position, who Buddha is, you know, and uh, what kind of quality Buddha has. So you want to become like him or like Buddha, maybe him is uh, too much specific. You know, so, so that reason we take a refuge. So, that is involved to the fundamental motivation of the Bodhicitta. Then, I mean, the, uh, the refuge, sorry. Then, uh, in the Mahayana motivation, is on that, within the, this fundamental motivation of the Hinayana, then we add in Bodhicitta. How we add in Bodhicitta is a, this is not enough to liberate myself alone. Since Sentient beings are like a dear, like dear to dear mother to you, like mother, dear to you, so dear like your mother, or someone's kindest to in this life, every sentient beings. So the reason with all the liberating them, your alone liberation is not good enough. So you want to liberate every sentient being from the samsara. That is it within the renunciation. So second is called the Mahayana motivation is the Bodhicitta. And the Vajrayana motivation is it? And uh, you have to recognize it within the you. Buddha is within the you. Where you have hope that you want to become a Buddha or you want to become enlightened. Is the reason is it because of the seed or the essence of that Buddha is within the you. You know, you have to recognize in that one, you have to away from that. That, that is a uh, uh, fundamental motivation of Vajrayana. So these three combination motivation, you know, Hinayana, Mahayana, Vajrayana, then uh, uh, with, within this kind of motivation, we should uh, uh, involve, uh, what call it, engaging in the acti activity of Dharma. So, here, every time, any even you doing just a few um, um, mantra or a few prostration or a few circumulation or even just offering one simple flower, 
This is a, it's called the virtue as a beginning. The virtue as a beginning means that you need that kind of motivation. Okay, uh, you want to be renunciation, or you want to become free from samsara. That way, you want to accumulate the merit, and not just only yourself. You want to be liberate every sentient being with you. Why you want to liberate, and why you have hope that one? Because uh, you have to recognizing the Buddha nature is within the you. That is the Vajrayana motivation. So with this motivation then we should engage in any kind of activity that is called the virtue as a beginning. So today, actually, um, a really special day for many reasons. One, uh, uh, today is the uh, lunar uh, uh, 25th. Uh, day of the lunar month, so it's called the Dagini day. So what it means, uh, Tibetan uh, Buddhism will believe all the, uh, uh, you know, uh, sky Daginis uh, travel to the, uh, on the earth to visit. So, so that reason we call the Dagini days uh, and uh, try to do some uh, special um, prayer or puja is more impacted from that. And uh, second is a, uh, one of the most important Gaiju master. I think most of you know, uh, Lord Pamudrupa, who was the root guru of uh, Lord Jethasumbun, who was, who was the founder of Dukun Gaiju. Uh, so his uh, uh, anniversary is today. And also, in Tibet, uh, in the Dubokaju, founder of the Dubokaju, uh, great master, one is called the Dubo uh, And uh, also his anniversary is the today. So that way today is a really uh, precious, uh, special day. And uh, lots of people will do uh, like puja. Today's day we do Lama Chaba or the puja. So I was thinking this morning, what is the best way to return, uh, do puja or offering to the guru? So then I was uh, uh, thinking, you know, normally we said there's a three different way to uh, offering to the guru. It's called the lesser offering, you know, or small offering. It's a material, like we arranging material like food, clothes, water, or things like that offering substance, you know, material offering to the guru, um, <clears throat> including the, uh, what we do, uh, puja, that's called the lesser offering. And uh, literally, you know, all the medium offering, as uh, we call the service. So uh, lots of people do different service to the dharma, different service to the lineage, different service to the uh, you know, center different serv service to the guru personal. There are so many different ways you can serve to the dharma. You know, like a, for example, if one if we have to run one uh, organization, and if lots of people have to work so many hours to run that, even if it's a small organization like our center, it's just a small, but uh, people uh, working every day try to uh, keep the uh, center running. You know, and same as a monastery. I know some monks whole life just work, 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 work for the monastery. And they never get special uh, kind of like a uh, title or special recommend, uh, uh, you know, uh, recommend. But uh, still they would hold the, you know, any kind of a uh, uh, hope or any kind of, a, uh, uh, you know, but they just continually work for uh, tirelessly whole life. That's called a medium service, I mean, offering to the guru. Then supreme is called a offering as a practice, you know, dharma practice. So what is the dharma practice? So dharma practice is there's a three way to you can practice the dharma, hearing, contemplate, and meditation or practice. So we have to, uh, including the uh, 
uh, you know, teachings, Dharma teachings. So, uh, so those all is a part of this uh, practice offering. So that way, I thought maybe today's this our uh, arranging the teaching day is a, uh, I think best way to we can offer to those all uh, past master. Reason is a, for for them. It's not that important to uh, gain some food or material because they're not seeking that one. Their purpose to come on the earth is to help other sentient beings to their wisdom. So when we follower continually, uh, you know, spread those wisdom to the other, that is the best way to uh, offer uh, to the, um, you know, uh, that uh, to that guru. So so that reason today's uh, guru's special occasion day. I think this is the best way to we can offer to our guru to dharma activity. You know, hearing, contemplate, and meditation through that too. We can go through the text. So, uh, um, then <clears throat> now we go continue with the text. Um, every, I think pretty much every text is the same. Uh, it's called the uh, beginning, middle, and uh, end. So beginning is the uh, kind of like a, uh, basically like a pay homage in and uh, what called humility with regard of a word or meaning or whatever, there's uh, some way to uh, start. So those are uh, uh, you know, uh, beginning, uh, then actually text comes. So beginning, we already discussed last week. Now it's a second part. It's called the uh, actually text. So actually text is uh, also divided into two. This is called the uh, faith, the support on the path of a higher one and lasting happiness, which is mean that uh, uh, if you want to achieve something goodness for uh, uh, mundane goodness or super mundane goodness of the nirvana or uh, everlasting happiness, then you need a, a, a faith for that. You know, uh, you have to uh, support by the faith then uh, you can achieve that one. So there's uh, like a, we normally uh, divide, uh, uh, you know, divide it into three kinds of faith. Vivid faith, eager faith, trusting faith. So vivid faith means that you have some kind of positive energy, positive thought, thought on that, you know, kind of a likable, kind of a admiration, kind of a, uh, uh, joyful energy, something gained from that. Like a, if you visit to the Holy Lama, Holy Place, you know, if you see the Buddha's statue or something, whoever you like, whenever you see that one, you have some kind of special thought, special feeling inside. You know, uh, it's, it's, a, it's not like a normal your feeling is not there. You, 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 you're, you know, how you feel, how you think. It's all going to change. Um, so uh, when you have a devotion to the, your guru, whenever you see that guru, you have such joy feeling on something. That's called a vid faith. Uh, then once you have that joy, second thought is, I wish be like him, you know, or her. I wish be like uh, them. You know, want to be like that. So you're really eager to reach their state, reach their uh, whatever. Like uh, when we see the Buddha, we immediately, uh, you know, know what does Buddha mean. And uh, our hope, our wish is to uh, become ourselves as a Buddha too. So that's called the eager faith. Then third one is uh, trust. You have to build a trust on those if you don't trust, you never follow to that particular. So that way it was called the trust in faith. So here, uh, that uh, what called the uh, base of the faith, supporting 
So what you need to think, what you have to know as a six things, like uh, you have the text is a, uh, in the, it said, uh, it said the twin pen, I don't know this is English, I never heard this way. Twin pen has uh, proclaimed the six object for continual mindfulness, the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, generosity, giving, ethical discipline, and a God. We continue mindfulness of a mess of good quality of this. So you have to see their good quality. That's why I said like vivid faith. You know, what does the Buddha mean? Buddha's quality. You have to see the Dharma's quality. You have to see the Sangha's quality. You have to see the how much great benefit you can gain if you practice in generosity. You have to know the uh, uh, quality of the moral ethic. Then see also you have to know the quality of the God one. You know, why they, they were born there. So those knowing of those and they have a, that kind of uh, understanding their quality as a as, uh, uh, straight, our faith, our uh, you know, so so that reason these six things should be remembered always. And uh, there's a different translation, and uh, uh, he this another translation said six things are to Buddha has explained all that their virtue you must keep in mind. So here said virtue, it means the quality, you know. So what is the qualities is it? You have to remember the Buddha's quality. What is a Buddha's quality is a Buddha is a complete of the two aims. You know, aim of his personal aim is to become a Buddha. Aim of sentient beings benefit, spontaneously benefit every sentient beings. So that way, that is the quality of the Buddha, complete of two aims. What is the quality of the Dharma? Is it Dharma? Is it truth? And truth, there is true truth, relative truth and absolute truth. Both are truth. You know, one is a real, one is not real. Both are truth. Relative is a truth. Absolute is truth. You know, relative level A, uh, Buddha told us, like, a, uh, for example, you know, for noble truth. Truth of the suffering is a come from the truth of the source of suffering, which is the afflicted emotions. Truth of the nirvana is a come from cessation. That's nirvana is come from the truth of the path. So what it means that all the suffering is created by the negative karma and negative emotion. All the happiness is a create or result of the good karma, good deed. So that's the true truth about the Dharma, Buddha taught. Then, uh, quality of the uh, Sangha is called, in the Tibetan, we call that uh, Sangha's quality is a uh, wisdom and liberation. So, they have a wisdom that way they liberated from the samsara. Those are noble Sangha. So, that is the Sangha's quality. So this is also show if we want to liberate it, it is a necessity wisdom. Yeah, it's, so, so then, um, uh, so those are Buddha Dharma Sanghas and uh, um, we must know what's the Buddha, what's the Dharma, what's the Sangha. If we have time, maybe we can go to detail, but not today here. Today just leave that much. Then uh, the last three will repeat again. So uh, I don't want to go there. So these, these six things is that uh, understand that the six quality. By this understand that, that their quality or their virtue we will uh, help us to, it will help us to, you know, uh, engaging in the uh, continually good deed or dharma practice or whatever you call uh, uh, it's come, uh, it is bring us to the path. If we understand these six qualities of the six virtues. So, so the reason this is called the base of the path is the foundation of the path 
is that uh, I mean um, the faith, the support of the faith is the understanding these six qualities. And in the Buddha himself said in the Sutra, uh, what is the absolute goodness or uh, virtue, whatever you use, is a Tibetan called the Kyawa. And said, but the answer was uh, uh, Nirvana is the absolute goodness. Uh, and uh, what is the necessity for achieving that goodness? Uh, answer is uh, faith is the necessity to achieve that uh, goodness. So that reason we need to, uh, you know, we need the support, or we need the faith as a necessity. But this is not talking about, uh, you know, blind faith. This is a talk about the uh, intelligent faith. This is a talk about the wisdom faith by knowing their quality. A blind faith means that you have no idea why you believe in something, but you have to believe because someone says so. It's not like that. So if you want to be, you know, it's called a um, you know, superior mind, uh, faith would follow by the Dharma. So this is mean that your own intelligent, your own wisdom, uh, understand the quality of those all, and uh, uh, so then you follow with that. So that way, this is not about the blind faith. So because sometimes people think faith means just believe something. You know, doesn't matter what it is. When your master said, "Oh, that 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 you know that tree is." Buddha, you have to believe in that, that tree you have to see as a Buddha. It's not talking about that kind of faith. Here it's talking about the faith as a knowing that quality of in those individuals, those six things. So always remember those uh, subjects, which is the uh, support of the faith. I think in the talk of this year. So uh, as earlier I mentioned, we say, Faith is a support of the, it is a title that said, faith as a support for the path to the higher realm and lasting happiness. As a lasting happiness and forever happy. So uh, forever lasting happiness, we need the three jewels, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. But that lasting happiness, happiness is, a, is a little bit impossible to, for everyone, maybe accept few as to within the one lifetime. So it take time, you know, many lifetimes. Like Shaijian Muni Buddha took the one, uh, three, uh, three great years. That is a kind of one of the shortest one. So, so when it is taking uh, uh, many lifetimes and we need a really suitable condition rebirth. So suitable condition rebirth is called the higher realm. So when, uh, how to we can, you know, we can have that suitable condition to that can practice Dharma continually, as it said the last three, um, as it called the, uh, uh, what called the mindfulness of a, uh, of a, a generosity, mindfulness of a, a moral ethic and mindfulness of a guard realms. Those three are specifically mentioned here as a, you know, until uh, we achieve the nirvana, we need those uh, support. So what does the God mean here? God means the heavenly realm or celestial realm. I think higher realm, basically. I think they use here God because if said human realm, then people don't, don't see that much special because human have lots of problem too. So we don't see as a human as a really superior we see human as a there are of problem and misery and things that way we never feel like we are superior. So when we talk about the God realm, then we always think, oh, God is much, much superior, but a much, much higher one, you know? So in humans mentally, we have that kind of attitude. So that reason based on that attitude, just mention the God realm. Otherwise, this is a basically talk about the, uh, uh, you know, um, higher ones. So how, you know, you have to uh, understand that what is quality of the higher realm. We normally talk about the leisure and endowment, those things, but a good life or can say. 
So those are not come with a cost lessly. Need to have cost. Without the cost, cannot have the result. So what is the cost to rebound to the higher realm and specifically God realm who are much superior than human condition, you know? Uh, so that is it. Uh, that is it mentioned the second one is a uh, mindfulness of God. You know, uh, mindfulness of God is it said, always be in trust yourself with the body, speech, and mind uh, through the 10 pathway of a constructive karma is called the 10 virtue. Turn away from the intoxicant and likewise a delight as well in the livelihood that are constructive. So this one is a what what saying is a cause to reborn in the higher realm, and specifically God realm, is a person who practice the ten virtue with a body, speech, and mind. So what is the ten virtue? Is a in the jewel ornament? If you uh, look the karma, try to remember. What is the 10 virtue? Is basically avoiding the 10 non virtue is the 10 virtue. Like, uh, what is 10? So that way we have to know the 10 non virtue, which is which you, we have to avoid. So, physically, three killing, sexual misconduct, and stealing. And uh, 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 verbally, languagely, in a, uh, vocally, four lying. Divisive speech, uh, harsh word, and idle talk. And uh, from the mentally, three covetousness, harmful thought, and wrong view. So, those called the 10 non virtue. Once you avoid or stop doing those 10 non virtue, it's becoming virtues. And on that you can do as a you know uh, uh, you know also you can do as a saving life. You know, I, I for the saving life, I just uh, thinking in a lot of Asian they call the animal liberation. Actually, you're not saving those lives because they are not for the killing; they're just for the business. So you're not really saving life from them. Actually, if you really want to save life, you have to go to the butcher's house. Buy the animal who could kill a meat now. You know? Then save. Not just save. You have to take care of them. That's called the life liberation. In the Tibetan, we really go to the butcher's house. Some people, what they do is they rope, make round, and throw behind you from the bunch of animals. And whatever animal get that rope, you buy that one. Then you liberate this. So uh, actually, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Because uh, actually, meantime, especially in, I saw uh, lots of bird liberation. You know, people catch the bird, put it in the cage, and <laughs> then they take to the market, and you go to buy, and you have to do puja to release, and have to hold them. And between those catching to, uh, until you release, and the last bird already died in the cage. So actually you are slaughtered of the bird. I don't know. So, so I'm not really uh, uh, favorable with that kind of uh, animal liberation. Actually, if you really want an animal liberated, you have to go to the butcher's house, like go to the food market, you know, and you buy the fish and uh, yeah, like a lobster and those actually go to kill for the food. Then. That is called the animal liberation. So you have to liberate, protect the life. That is one. And have an ethical life. A, uh, the third one is a, a give, not take, which is not belong to you. So those are physically key virtue. And verbally telling truth. But when you tell the truth, actually you need lots of skill to how to tell the truth. Because sometimes when you tell the truth, it has hurt lots of people. With really skillfully, you know, have to tell the truth. So it needs a lot of skill. So that way being Buddhist is not easy. <laughs> tell the truth. And try to uh, make the friend to, to people not friendly. 
you know, uh, those, you know, whatever they have a problem, solve and make them friend, friend. And try to, to speak a gentle, sweet uh, a word and uh, uh, only talk, meaningful. So those are four from the speech. Then four, three from the mind, you know, renounce from the detach all the material and uh, uh, wishful of all the, the good thought for the other's benefit and have a wisdom. Those are from the mind. So this is a, a generally avoiding the, all the 10 non-virtue is the virtue. And on that, then you can do this uh, 10 things that's uh, becoming uh, 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 10 virtues act. Here said 10 pathway of constructive karma. Okay, then, uh, and, and the one next one said, turn, turn away from intoxicant. This is a, like a drinking alcohol, using drugs. So this is in the Tibetan, we said, they are not the naturally wrongdoing. You know, intoxicant is not a naturally negative action. This is just a drink, uh, like alcohol. They are just a drink. But uh, when it is toxic and it waking, waking, you know, become weak, waking your sense of faculty. Since once you it make you waking, waking sense uh, your sense of faculty, then all other problem comes. So that reason is said, "Chan in yamba kuinji zawani." Uh, it means that alcohol is the source of all the other problems. So that way, you don't uh, take even the uh, dual uh, drop, you know, on the grass, only small drop. So even that kind, because from there to becoming alcoholic is not that far. So, so, so the reason also have to avoiding the avoid you have to avoid from the toxicants then said likewise delight as well in the livelihood that are constructive it means that in the uh, in, in the eight noble path you know buddha said right livelihood one of the eight is called the right livelihood so what does this mean that you have to uh, you have to avoid is uh, mm, uh, 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 five different kind of improper livelihood. Uh, so it's a first called the flattery. Especially this is a, you know practitioner. It means that he say nice things to the somebody who would give you something. So hoping to give you something and said a fl flutter, maybe I'm not saying correct pronunciation. F -A -F -L -A -T -T -E -R -Y. kind of flooring, flooding, so that's the one. And uh, hinting, hinting means, oh, you know, someone, someone give me this and that. Oh, you know, I need this one. Look, my, this is have a problem. You show me all your broken this and that. At, uh, hinting to the by you name one. Then uh, uh, third one is called the seeking reward for favor. So just you give to something, you know. Uh, uh, this day most of Lama have always have some gift. So this is a, maybe I, I'm not saying everyone have that kind of, but maybe there is some some involve of the what called the seeking reward of the favor. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, then uh, the fourth one is called a uh, uh, pretentious behavior. Pretentious behavior is it when people come, you, look, you act like really good practitioner, you know, when everybody is gone, then you are just gone to the ordinary. So like uh, you act two kind of personality from our 
order and by yourself. That is uh, pretend that you all the pretending. Whatever you do is a pretending. Then uh, uh, the last one is called the con con contract mean. I think contract, yeah, uh, uh, kind of like a kings and minister they powerfully taking away from you. Yeah. Or or uh, uh, or uh, you know like a deceiving for the uh, measurement, like a, you know how to make the a little bit how to say. It. <laughs> uh, when I was working on the outside, and one of my friends said, "This one wood name are four by two." You know, it's like a, one side is four inches and one side is two inches. But he said, actually, there is no four by two. They reduce about half inch. So and it makes lots of money. So that kind of kind of deceiving way. So those is called the wrong livelihood. Remember, Nagarjuna, he feed monks wrong livelihood because of there's no food. Even that kind of circumstance, because he feed the wrong livelihood, when uh, Saraha come out of the retreat and he uh, uh, Saraha give him a punishment that he have to build one billion uh, stuba in the world. So Nagarjuna have to build one billion stuba to purify his uh, wrong livelihood. You know that uh, he feed to the monks by uh, food that is got with business. You know he exchange with the world. And also, uh, uh, like uh, one of the uh, Kabuvas student, he sold the text, Dharma text. He exchanged with the money. You know, he give to someone the text and they take money. And for that, Kabuva asked him to. He had to build, I think, one hundred or one thousand of that text. You know, have to reprint. It means that by writing by hand. So, so that, that kind of a heavy punishment can come by this kind of wrong livelihood. So, the reason is why because if you live with a wrong livelihood, you create a negative karma. Once you create a negative karma, reborn on the higher realm is impossible. So that way, if you want to be reborn in the higher realm, especially God realm or a human realm, so with the higher beings, then you have to live with a delight livelihood. It means the right livelihood. Okay. Uh, now it's a second one. It's called the uh, keeping uh, uh, what called the uh, 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 gener generosity. You know, gen uh, uh, gener generosity in mind. It means that so so quality of the giving way and uh, not giving way, false or not giving way. I think kind of come together. Said here, say, having realized that possession are transcend and lack of any essence, be gen uh, generous in proper manner toward monk, Brahman, whore, and your kin. For the benefit of there is no better friend beside the generosity. So, what does it mean that you have to see first? You have to see as a not giving false because uh, material is, is, is here said a transcend. Uh, other translators they use as a ephemeral, uh, it, it, it means that not really stable because it's impermanent. Today you can be, have lots of money, tomorrow you may you lose everything. You know, like a, uh, I think 2008. 2002, one of the, uh, there's a one big shock for the Wall Street and uh, lots of people lost all their saving, just one day. So uh, there, that kind of story is comes because uh, all material are impermanent. You know, uh, we have no guarantee uh, whatever we have today is we will use tomorrow. 
So uh, that way is called a transcend. I don't know transcend is a, uh, actually a correct word or not. Uh, I'm not good with that. It's great, yes. Good? Yes, it's good. Okay, okay. It's just slightly, yeah. Yeah, okay. So just, just I mean, in prominent. Then the second yeah. one is called the lack of essence. I'm not sure essence of word is it work here or not. It's basically saying it's no value. You know, yes. uh, it just um, more you keep, it's become a more misery and uh, uh, problems. So that way it's no essence, mean that there are no goodness on that. So, so that reason actually Patricia Mbuchi said, if you have a sheep, your suffering is a sheep size, but if you have a horse, your suffering is a horse size. You know, animal size change, your suffering also change. So uh, it's, it's the same as a, if you're driving, it, uh, you know, the small car, you have a suffering is a small and cheap car. But if you're driving big and expensive car, your suffering is also big and expensive. So this is just change as a, your more material, you know, bigger or uh, uh, more number you have, uh, that much your, uh, you know, problem is a, uh, uh, what called that? increasing too. So it's not going to give you joy from them. So that way it's called the no essence, mean that no value, no no meaningful, you know, that way is what is no essence mean. So that way it's not giving and collect all the any only material position and wealth is it this way. So uh, only problem is come from there. So so what is it meaningful to do that one is it? Just said, be general, generous in the proper manner toward. So you have to give to someone. Yeah. So to to whom you give is it? A, a object to the giving is called the quality. Is it like a uh, you know uh, monks or Brahmin? Brahmin mean here is a uh, uh, like people who uh, you know really dedicated their life uh, practicing. Uh, um, not necessarily they are monk, but uh, dedicated their life for the practicing, so high beings or whatever you call the spiritual people. And uh, that is called the quality, object of the quality. And uh, object of the compassion is a needy one, like poor, misery, and different way to have a circumstance to that they don't have enough food and drink and clothes. So have to give to them. And third one is said, said your kin. It means that somebody give you kindness, like your parent. You know, anyone who give you uh, kindness, you have to reward them back to with the, uh, your generosity. I, I remember when uh, my friend uh, said her mom give her some money and whatever, you know, and uh, then she, she told mom, oh, I don't need it right now. Uh, but she said, mom said, I want to give a warm hand. So, I mean, after that, mom, you know, normally when you die, someone, family member, rest is go to the family, you will or not. But uh, uh, if you give now, you have an accumulation of merit to, to giving. Once you die and they take away, I don't think so you have that merit. So, so that reason, this one is a keen one, is maybe your dear one, your loved one, give to that one because that is part of your paying the kindness to them. And here they said, for the benefit, there's no better friend beside the generosity. You remember in the jewel ornament, said Kamboba said, really a simple way, whatever you give to other is your. Whatever you keep home is not your. So, so what it means that if you give to someone, that merit go with you no matter where you go. Even you die today, that merit go with you. But if you keep all the material in home, it's not necessarily you guarantee that you can use them. You have a chance to use them. You know? You see the lots of people when they die in their closet. So many new clothes. You know, never use them. New jewelry, new clothes, and lots of things that are new. They haven't get chance to use them. So, so that way, we, you know, not necessarily all of them we can use ourselves. It's becoming belong to us. So, 
some people whole life work, 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 make money, money, and one day suddenly they're dead. You know, so they have a karma to make the money, but they have no karma to use them. So that reason have to use for benefit way. So, you know, that way I said the best benefactor. What is the best benefit is the practice of generosity because if you practice the generosity, that merit of, uh, you know, what you accumulate is that you don't have to share to anyone. It's a hundred percent profit you will get. So this is what it means that when you're practicing Dharma, you need the material support. Without the material support, you cannot practice the Dharma. Lots of people saying, oh, materialism is in this, no good, this and that. But you need food, you need clothes, you need shelter, and everything you know necessary to you have to support your this physical body, as long as you have this body. And so without the material support, you cannot get that, you know. So how to gain this material support of the whatever richness or whatever you call it, is it your merit? Lots of people think when you become rich because you have education and you are smart. Smart and education alone cannot give you the uh, you know, richness. You need a good merit. So, 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 so that way, and then when you continually practice the Dharma many lifetime and you have no problem with the financial support of it. Because you see there are lots of people I met, especially in the Western culture. They really want to go to the practice the Dharma, but they don't have a money to go to that. They don't have the financially support enough, so they couldn't go. You know, so things like that. So, so it's a necessity to have a financial support enough to you can practice your Dharma continually. So, so the reason and that this is all the financial support is uh, if you did in the past life good practice of the generosity you will have this life financial support. If you haven't done any of those, no matter how you try, you will not get that one. So, so the reason, I think this, this, this one is basically saying in the higher realm, if you want to live with a comfortable life, I'm not talking about becoming rich or something. Be comfortable life and that way you can practice Dharma continually, you need a financial support. That financial support is how do you prepare is it through the cause. What is the main cause of having financial support is that your act of generosity. So, so that reason we have to practice the generosity. There's no better, uh, better friend, better benefactor for yourself than being generosity. Okay, then the third one, last one, as a uh, reminder, uh, it's called the keeping the discipline in mind. So here, you can read that you must entrust yourself in the ethical discipline that are not uh, uh, compromise, not uh, debase, not corrupt, and are not transfer. It's been said that uh, ethical discipline is the foundation for the, all the good qualities as the earth for the everything moving or unmoving. So this is a saying, a say, you, uh, you have to keep the pure ethical discipline, you know, especially moral discipline. So how do you keep the ethical discipline? Is it not a compromise? It means that uh, not, uh, here other translation they use as a uh, not uh, unbroken, without the broken. And uh, second one is they said uh, not uh, uh, debased, is the other translator you use as a under un, uh, degraded? Uh, third one is a uncorrupted, not corrupted. Here also uncorrupted. And fourth one is free from stain. So these are uh, uh, what is the stain? Is the cause of a uh, you know degenerating the ethic? Is the afflicted emotion? So those all whatever causing to your moral ethic or discipline. Um, then you have to avoid them. You have to keep the pure discipline, pure ethic, pure uh, what call um, um, so. So then uh, you know it's become a 
foundation of the all the rest of the practice. So he has said, it said the ethic discipline is the foundation of all the good quality. It means like uh, Buddha talked three trainings, training of the morality, training of the wisdom, I mean samadhi and training of the wisdom. So training of the morality is the foundation of the all other trainings. Since you have the training of the morality, then you can have the samadhi and wisdom. If you don't have the training of the morality and uh, the samadhi is really difficult. So, so, so the reason uh, this, this three, are, uh, I mean, this ethical discipline is uh, really important to uh, uh, protect our uh, uh, being uh, disciplined. So this is not talking about the be monk or non or yet. This is nothing have to do with that. It uh, doesn't matter we wear a robe or not. We have to be disciplined. We have to avoid all those uh, uh, negative emotion and unethical activities, whatever causing to us to become unethical activities. You know, uh, we have to avoid them to if you want to be good dharma practitioner, because all other quality like the samadhi, wisdom, realization, all those good quality in the you know path and. Uh, uh, resort of the Buddhahood, or is this, uh, everything is based on this foundation of the, uh, uh, the, the path, uh, foundation, which is the ethical discipline. So example is uh, like earth. Earth is, uh, you know, everything is rely on the earth. Because of the earth, all the moving things like river, human, animal, everything move around here, there, because of the earth. Or because of the earth, like a tree is standing, house is standing, you know. Uh, so, so the reason, uh, you know, every time when people build in the house, they always be really, uh, you know, detail emphasize on how to make the foundation. That's important. Once you make the foundation, then the rest is become easier, good easier. So. Uh, I heard in the like uh, Malaysia, uh, I mean the uh, Japan and uh, 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 Taiwan, those islands, they can launch the earthquake. So that way they, they found the technique, uh, technology that they can, you know, how to protect from the, uh, not destroying the uh, whole building from the earthquake by building some special foundation. So, so that is, uh, you know, whatever foundation you build, and that kind of a rest is it become strong or non-strong. If you have a really weak foundation, if you build a really beautiful house, it's not gonna stay there too long. So same thing is if you don't have a good foundation of the moral ethic, no matter how much you meditate, it never uh, ease your mind from the afflicted emotion and the negative karma. So, so then you, we become like Sunday Christian, you know? The Sunday Christian means that only you become good, you know, practitioner, whatever Christian on the Sunday, the rest of the day is become a normal, you know, we're not disciplined. So, so that reason we have to be continually disciplined and all the other good qualities come from the continually discipline. So that reason keeping moral discipline, you know, uh, ethical discipline or, uh, say, um, being righteous. I think this is a uh, foundation to the all the uh, in Latin qualities. It's uh, based on that ethics. So the reason these three always be remind um, on the, uh, the Nagarjuna asking to the king. So these are called the um, um, what called the uh, base of the path. Is the faith. So remembering those six. Should I just? Do not change yourself.